everyone, and welcome to our quick demo on Microsoft's Compliance Manager. This tool is designed to help your organization manage regulatory compliance within Microsoft 365 and other cloud services. By the end of this demo, you'll be able to 1. Access Compliance Manager, 2. Navigate its essential features, 3. Understand your compliance score, 4. Implement key improvement actions, 5. Set up and customize assessments, and 6. Collaborate and update your compliance status. So before I get into it, you can access Compliance Manager at compliance.microsoft.com. If you run into any issues, just contact your global administrator and make sure they've granted you the necessary permissions. I also want to point out that we will provide further resources in the description below, so keep an eye out for those if you have any additional questions after the demo. Okay, so you heard me mention compliance score. What is that? So this is a number that Microsoft provides as a quick way to see how your organization's doing from a compliance perspective. The score is calculated based on actions that your organization implements to ensure compliance. We call these controls, and the controls are assigned a score based on whether they're mandatory or discretionary, and then whether they're preventative, detective, or corrective. Just a quick reminder, mandatory controls are actions that must be followed without any exception, such as password policy that enforces specific requirements like length or complexity. Discretionary controls depend on the user to follow policies voluntarily, like asking users to lock their computers when they leave. Preventative controls, these are measures taken to prevent risks, so for example, using encryption. And then detective controls, these uh, monitor systems to detect irregularities or breaches such as system and compliance audits. And then lastly, corrective controls. These aim to minimize the impact of security incidents and restore normal operations like responding to a privacy incident. So essentially each control has an assigned value in the compliance score based on the risk it represents. Now that you have all that background knowledge, let's get into the demo. So first off, when you navigate through that URL, it's going to bring you to this page, which is the Microsoft Purview homepage. From here, you can click on the Compliance Manager tab on the left-hand side, or if you've been here previously, you might have set up a Compliance Manager card, which you can click into as well. Either way, you'll land on this Compliance Manager overview page. Here's where you can easily view and assess your overall compliance posture with the compliance score that I mentioned earlier. So at a glance, the score allows you to quickly understand your progress in meeting the data protection requirements and regulatory standards relevant to your organization. So some things to point out on this screen. You see that the majority of the score comes from Microsoft Manage Actions, and this is a great call out because it showcases the benefits of shared responsibility. When an organization moves their data to the cloud, Microsoft provides built-in data protection controls to secure your data. While your organization isn't completely off the hook, a lot of that stress is off your shoulders when partnering with Microsoft or a partner like 2W. So if you haven't been in Compliance Manager before, you will still see a score based on some common regulations and standards, providing a starting point. However, you can and should customize this and only pull the regulations that are relevant to your organization. To the right of the score, you'll see a list of key improvement actions. This shows the top actions you can take to improve your compliance posture and the resulting impact it'll have on your score. As you take actions, your score will update accordingly, and the solution is continuously scanning your environment for additional necessary actions. If you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see your score broken down by categories. Like you can see protect information, govern information, and manage devices. And then depending on your role, you may also have an assessment view, which breaks the score down by specific regulations and standards. So I do want to take a second and talk about setting up an assessment, which luckily Microsoft makes super easy. So they have a template library of over 150 assessments you can choose from. You can then modify these to suit your needs or build one completely from scratch. And a quick blurb here is an assessment template is the foundation containing control information and action recommendations. But remember, you need to create an assessment from the template in order to record progress and receive a compliance score. So this page right here, this shows all the assessments you track for your organization. 
The assessments you add affects your score because the more assessments you add, the more improvement actions you'll see and the higher your score denominator will be. So once you click add assessment, you can see the available te templates that I mentioned earlier. Uh, for this example, we'll use GDPR. You then create a name, assign it to appropriate group, and groups are a way to organize your assessments. So we've seen people use it to organize by audit date, or if you're maybe in multiple regions, you can organize it that way, whatever you choose. Then you're gonna review everything and click create. Now you're able to see all the control information associated with this assessment, including an overview and then a controls tab that shows the status of controls grouped by family in both graph and list view. So if you scroll down to that list view, you can click into any of these and we'll go into organization of information security and then further into mobile device policy. And then we'll get a breakdown of key improvement actions specific to that. Also, they always outline the actions Microsoft took to meet the specific requirements, which is also clickable. Doing that, you'll see detailed implementation notes and test notes from Microsoft. All right, so if we go back a couple screens to the groups, we can filter by failed test status and then search for failed controls as if we're looking to enhance our compliance readiness. For example, require mobile devices to use a password, failed a medium risk test. If we click into that, on the left-hand side, you can see all the various controls relevant across your assessments. And also worth calling out, this section walks through the implementation steps and provides a launch now link to take you back to the configuration page for your next steps. So if we return to the mobile device policy page, let's go into require mobile devices to wipe on multiple sign-in failures. This action doesn't have an automated assessment yet, meaning it's not implemented. So for this one, you would need to edit the status. Once you go into that, a window pops up and you can assign it to a colleague for collaboration. You can change the implementation status uh, for today, I'll change it as implemented, and then you can set a respective date. And then you have this box where once your internal auditor assesses the control, they can go in and pass the test status. And a quick reminder that only actions marked as passed will reflect in your compliance score, so make sure you keep that up to date. Then you click save, and you see right up here that the status changed. Here's also where you can upload evidence, implementation details, test notes, anything for record keeping. Now, bringing this back full circle, if we go back to the overview page, you can see how the score increased from that new implemented action. Okay, so lastly, I wanna go over custom templates. So to create custom templates, you can either extend existing ones or build new ones completely. So let's walk through adding new controls and actions to an existing existing template first. So we'll extend the ISO 27001 template by providing an Excel sheet with relevant control and action details. I'll actually pull up the sample file that's available to download on the screen so we can walk through it quick. So if you pull it up, you have a template tab and this will contain metadata for the title, product, certification, and covered services. And then you can see you have a control family tab, which contains information about the controls, mapping actions to controls using the control action title column. And then you have the action tab, which specifies new action and their attributes, such as implementation, score, description, and sorting dimensions. After completing the Excel file, we can then import it. And don't worry, because if there are any errors, Compliance Manager provides inline highlighting to help easily resolve them, which is super convenient. Once the import is successful, you can then select Create Template, and then navigate to the Assessment Template page to create the actual assessment. Note, you haven't actually started working on the assessment, so there will not be a status yet. Once you click Create Assessment, it'll then be live. All right, well, hope that helped answer any questions you might have about Compliance Manager. If not, check out those additional resources below or reach out to us at helpdesk at 2wtech.com.